Hey guys, welcome back. Today I'm going to be doing our first plan with me of 2022. That still sounds weird. So essentially today I'm going to be planning January and I'm going to be taking you through my setup and my new bullet journal, which is this guy right here. It's kind of weird to even be setting a monthly setup in this journal so soon, even though it's 10 days until the new year, but for some reason I never feel ready for the new year. Like it always feels like I'm planning this stuff way too far ahead, even though it's coming. It's almost here. It's less than two weeks away, but I thought I'd quickly show you what my yearly setup looks like before I get into my January setup in case you missed it. And if you did miss it and you want to see the full process video and hear me talking about all these spreads, I do have a setup video, which I'll link below, but this is kind of the foundation that we're working with. And after all these spreads, I'm going to be just jumping right in and setting up January. All right, so here we are. This is gonna be our first spread of our monthlies and I'm just gonna be diving right in and doing my setup because we might have a couple new people here today. If that's you, hello, hi, welcome. Um, I'm gonna be talking through each of my kind of spreads and all the details and all that good stuff just so that everyone's on the same page. And in case you haven't seen my setup before, you kind of know the process and spreads that I like to make and everything's really clear. So going off of that, the first thing I like to do in my monthly setup is my vision board. And this is what that looks like. This is my vision board for January. More commonly, these are kind of done for the year, but I actually prefer doing vision boards for the month. I don't actually like doing yearly vision boards because I just find it hard to encapsulate an entire year in photos, but I find with a month it really works well because I like to put images on here with specific things I want to do and I find that really helpful. So here's a breakdown of my vision board and how it looks this year. So I'll give you a quick rundown of the pictures in my board while I'm cutting it out in case you're curious. So a lot of these images are based off of my 2022 goals, as well as how I want to kind of feel during the month. And there are a couple images in here that have to do with January and the month of January and all that stuff. So I'm not going to go into my 2022 goals today. I'll do that in a separate video. But for the context of this vision board, one of the goals that I have this year is to really invest in spending time outside of the digital world. So this month, I thought I would focus on incorporating and really solidifying two main activities, which are reading and daily reflective journaling. So I have an image of a book in the bottom right hand corner. I also have a wrinkle in time, which is a specific book I want to read this month. And I find by putting specific images of the exact thing you want to do is a really great way to remind yourself and focus on doing the thing. and. I also have some images of socks and my dog and some trees and that's because January is usually really dark here in Canada. I also have my notebook which is me. I try to put photos of me and images I've taken whenever possible just because it feels a little more personal. This is me writing in my daily journal, a habit which kind of dropped off in December and I really want to pick back up. All right and here is the vision board all cut out. I just trim it with my paper trimmer that I have hanging out and then I go in and I paste it into my journal right here. In case you're curious about my process of vision boarding and how I actually make the physical vision board and the software I use, I did a tutorial video in my December plan with me on how I do that. but. Just briefly, I use the software Canva to collage all the photos and I use a custom canvas size with dimensions on the screen. 
and then I get the photos from Pinterest or from my camera roll and I will quickly run it through Lightroom and through a preset before I print it just because I find that really helps kind of make all the images look similar with both their brightness but also kind of how warm they look because I like to make sure my images are really nice and warm. So because this is a new journal, I have to quickly figure out how big this is on the page just so I can center it. Okay, that should be good. And I just do this by kind of looking at the dots and counting. actually did a little off center. It's a little too far up, but I'll figure it out next time. <laughs> but yeah, this is the vision board all done. This is what it looks like. And I love pasting this in my journal and kind of using it as that entry page. It's a really easy way to add decoration to your bullet journal and like visual interest without really like doing any type of art or drawing, which is great for me because I don't really like doing that, but I still like to have my journal look nice for the year. And this both looks nice and also reminds me of my goals and intentions and the things I want to do. So it helps me stay focused as well. So it's kind of a win-win. So now I'm going in and I'm making my cover page for the year, I guess. I consider my cover page to be both my vision board and this page on the right, which is a spot where I like to write the month and a monthly kind of overarching quote. And in the past, I've just kind of done whatever quote I wanted to, and that worked really well. By the way, I use these um, letter stamps for all the stamping in my journal, and you can find these on Amazon. Actually, everything I'm using today, I will be linking below, so it'll be really easy to find. But previously I've done this spread with quotes, just kind of based on whatever I feel like. And I'm gonna continue that this year, but I also thought it would be fun to do kind of all my quotes surrounding a theme if that makes sense. So for this year, 2022, all of my quotes are gonna be from movies. I really love watching movies. It's something I really enjoy and I wanna kind of tie each movie quote to the season and somehow I guess make it relevant for the month. So that is the plan. Actually, before I get into the quote quickly, instead of writing the month, I always like to go in and put a I don't know, chapter, I guess. I like to think of my months in my journal as like chapters of my life. I love the symbolism and poetry of that. So I am stamping here chapter one because it's the first month of the year, January. So that's, I guess, the kind of approach I do in case you were curious. All right, and that is what the first page looks like. By the way, before I go into the next spread, I thought I'd quickly mention a strategy I use when setting up my monthly spreads in a new journal. If you see this book over here, this is my old bullet journal. This is my 2021 journal. And I just have this over here for reference, just for like the spacing and breakdown of all my monthly spreads since normally I would just kind of look to the previous month to kind of figure out how many squares down or squares across I draw things. 
So having your old journal beside you to kind of guide you on the spacing of your new one, I find saves a ton of time and I definitely recommend it. Oh, so good. One more. do that oh no oh, oh, oh. wow okay how do we fix this okay <laughs> I gave it a think and this is what we're gonna do so in case you can't see what happened here I accidentally completely skipped a space which has never happened to me before actually usually i'm really good with calendars i normally don't have trouble with them but this month 2022 just was like let's shake things up a bit <laughs> and uh you know what things happen it definitely could have been worse like at least my calendar dates are right the calendar dates were wrong, then I think this would be a lot harder to cover up and deal with. But essentially what I'm going to do, here's my plan. I figured out a possible solution. It's going to be a little weird, but it's going to be probably the best we can do, considering we have a literal gap <laughs> in the calendar. So I'm going to add another week down here, just so that I have space to write 31. There are 31 days in January. I swear there were 30. I found that kind of shocking, but there are 31. So I'm gonna go ahead and add that. So then we have all of the days of the month on our calendar. So that is the important thing out of the way. So throw her in there. Okay, <laughs> next. What I'm gonna do is gonna look a bit weird, but I think it's better than just leaving it. I'm going to go ahead and erase the middle column lines. So erasing the lines in this middle column and I'm essentially gonna use this as decoration. <laughs> so my plan is I'm going to go in and I'm gonna use these stamps. These are moon face stamps from the brand Splice or MU. I think they're MU actually, again, linked below. But I think I will just go in and put the moon faces here. It's gonna be a bit odd, but nothing about this is now normal because we've missed a spot. But I think this will be a good way to work with what we have going on here. All right, and there we have it. You know what, considering what we were working with, 
I think this looks pretty good. It definitely doesn't look too odd. I think it's also kind of fun. You know, I would have never done this on my calendar before today. It does take up a bit of space, so I won't be able to write anything down here, but that is why we have this whole page on the right. So not the end of the world, but you know what? We definitely pivoted on this one, guys. This is a, this is a pretty good save, considering um, <laughs> what was about to go down. I'm just gonna add this clip here. This is a Midori index tab in the color orange, even though it kind of looks more copper in person. And this is just gonna mark off my calendar page so it's easy to access. And I'm gonna keep chugging along and we're gonna set up my other side of my calendar, which is my events page. This isn't events as they're happening or about to happen because I use my Google Calendar for that. However, I do use this space to write down kind of highlights and big monthly events that I want to remember and that I wanna kinda have noted down when I look back on my journal, just so I can get an overview of what happened that month. So, of course though, you could totally use this as a future planning calendar, that is no problem at all, but I just prefer to use my Google Calendar for that. But wow, what, <laughs> what a way to kick off the first plan with me for 2022. <laughs> Guys, that is just, I don't know, something about that feels very like, I don't know, it just, of course, right? Of course we would have. And all the plan with me's I've done with you guys, no issues with the calendar, and then first one of 2022, bam, there she is. But I hope that this gave you a good idea of the fact that any mistake you have, you can totally salvage it. Well, I guess you can't salvage anything, but I'd say most things you could definitely salvage. And if I can make it work, you can definitely make it work. But that's just the events page done. I just write down events as they come. I write the number, a dash, and then the event. And I just list them down below. Normally, I would write the moon phases under my calendar just so they're separate. This time, however, I will be just writing them in probably first because I don't have room under my calendar. And for my moon phases, I like to go in with my ruler and my pencil and do a diagonal cross on the days that moon phases are happening so I can get an overview of all that stuff and when it's happening during the month. So yeah, <laughs> a little longer than usual, uh, but now we are officially done this spread we are going to be moving on to some easier, <laughs> easier spreads ahead that are definitely less mistake prone. <laughs> I'm gonna be now setting up my habit trackers as well as my task list for the month. And while I'm doing that, I thought actually I would talk briefly since I feel like this video topic has kind of presented itself in a very natural way <laughs> about mistake intervention and how to kind of get around and strategize and avoid mistakes in your bullet journal because I think there's a lot of videos out there about how to cover up mistakes which is awesome and really helpful for those wild situations that you know just happened to me like 10 minutes ago but also I think there is something to be said for putting some thought into setting up your bullet journal in a way that will make your life easier. So let me just explain that concept because I know that sounds kind of weird, but essentially what I mean is while it's great to be able to fix mistakes in your journal and sometimes, you know, it's okay to just have a mistake and let it happen and move on. You know, I make tons of mistakes in my journals all the time. Like, spell. well, you guys know, spelling mistakes is a common one for me. Sometimes I draw the line in the wrong place and that's, you know, that happened today as we saw. And of course some mistakes are big enough that you need to kind of go in and fix them. And some of them are small enough that you can kind of just let them go on, and live your life. But what I mean by thinking about how to kind of 
more easily correct for mistakes in your bullet journal is there are some strategies that you can do up front when planning your setup and how you're gonna use your journal to correct things when you are journaling. And one of the easiest ways I think to explain this is by just sharing with you guys ways I've done it. So one way I've done this is through the use of pencil for all my lines. So if you've been noticing, I use this pencil right here for drawing all the lines in my journal. I actually don't draw any lines in pen. And while I think it looks nice, besides the decorative appeal, it's actually a very functional choice for me because I draw lines in the wrong place. <laughs> like every week, man, there's always a mistake. And I know for me, having gel pen or permanent pen lines just everywhere would really bother me. So instead, I just choose to use pencil and then if I make a mistake, it's really easy to just erase and correct it. Now, I think it's also important to kind of have a bit of grace with your journal and be ready for mistakes because that is a part of the bullet journaling process. But also I think doing things like drawing your lines in pencil, or maybe if you really don't like spelling mistakes, I remember one viewer mentioned to me, you know, they elected to use an erasable pen. So if they had spelling mistakes, they were able to correct for those. So I think before you go in and journal or while you're journaling, thinking about how you can kind of face those, I guess, pet peeves or big issues that would bother you head on and kind of avoid them is a really good strategy I think, and just allowing yourself the flexibility in your journal to correct for those mistakes if they do happen, I think just helps promote a more healthy and positive relationship with your journal. So I just wanted to mention that quickly, but <laughs> I've now come up with these two spreads and they're pretty much done. So let me just take you through how I made these. So for both of these spreads, I made my title here or my header, I guess, is the more appropriate term. Habits on the left and tasks on the right. For my habits, I'm leaving it blank this month just because I'm not fully done my 2022 goal setting and I just wanna go in and make this when I know which habits I actually wanna track, but I'll pop a picture up here of my usual habit tracker format. Now, my task list is Kind of a fun one. If you're unfamiliar with this type of task list, this guy right here is called an Alistair method list. And essentially what this allows me to do is, actually, let me just show you. <laughs> Cause I feel like sometimes seeing is a little easier. So for example, I think I've given this example before. So you guys are really getting an intimate look into my hygiene schedule. <laughs> As you see here, I've put a dot under every box except this one. This one is just for non-date specific tasks, so I don't really need that for this example, but I put a dot under every week because the task I'm writing right now is my laundry. My laundry is something that I like to do every week, just so you know. We have clean clothes, always a good thing, always a good, always a good thing to do every week. And I write the task laundry here, and then I have my signifier under every week because as I said before, I do my laundry every single week. And where this is really helpful is as you can see, I have every week I wanna do my laundry right beside my one task. So I don't have to go in in my task list as I normally would if I wasn't using this method and write down do laundry every single week of the month if I was writing out my monthly task list. This instead gives me a really good visual of how many times during the month I want to do laundry, but also when during the month I want to do laundry. So it kind of helps with scheduling things in advance so that you can be a little more organized with your to-do list. So hopefully that made sense. I have a full video on this type of list and how I use it in my weekly planning, which is called 
the rolling weekly and I'll link that video above and below if you want to learn more about this method and how you can use it in different ways but I would highly 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 recommend checking out the Alistair method if you've never heard of it and you bullet journal because it is such a game changer guys it is honestly one of the best discoveries I've made in my bullet journal practice probably over the entire four years I've been bullet journaling Anyway, that is these two spreads done. Let's move on to the final spread of my setup. So for this last spread, I'm gonna be taking out my alphabet stamps here. There, I'll just throw them there for you guys. And I'm gonna be using these slightly taller ones for the title of the month, which is January. I'll just be abbreviating that to the first three letters, Jan, just to make it fit a little easier. And then I'll also be going in with my rubber stamps that I've been using this whole time just for the year itself. And I like to do that for the spread, which is my one line a day spread, because I don't tend to do a lot of decorating on this guy since it has essentially 31 lines of writing depicting the month. So actually let me backtrack and quickly explain what this spread is in case anyone is new here. So a one line a day spread is essentially a place where you write down one line of writing based on what happened that day, every day of the month. And it looks very similar to the vertical calendar that's introduced in the bullet journal method by Ryder Carroll. And I really like using this as a form of kind of, I guess, memory keeping, but also just having a really nice overview of what happened during the month. And it's just always really cool to look back on but it's really easy to fill out since usually you can come up with one sentence for what happened every day. But I just find that it gives you a really nice overview of what happened in the month and really captures those moments, those kind of like everyday things that sometimes you can forget about but are nice to look back on after the fact. So I always like to make sure I include this spread every month because it really is like the highlight of my monthly reflection when I look back on all the stuff that happened during the month. Oh man, it still is so weird stamping 2022. I don't know, it feels weird. I'm not ready guys. <laughs> but anyway, we've now come to the end of the plan with me. So let's do a flip through of all the spreads that we set up today. And that is it guys, that is the January plan with me all done. I will be doing a updated weekly plan with me probably in January because I guess now is a good time to say this. I am going to be taking a break, just a nice little winter break from December 24th, probably through the first week of January. So it'll either be one to two weeks, just seeing how things go, but I think it'll just be a nice way to refresh and recharge and get ready for the new year. So yeah, you will be seeing me in January. And because I know that's a little ways away, I thought I would go ahead and wish you all a happy new year now, since I won't be posting that week and I probably won't be on social media that week either. However, I do really hope that you all have a great time celebrating the end of 2021 and a great beginning of 2022. And yeah, besides that, I guess I will see you guys in the new year. So take care everyone and I'll catch you next time.